As he sat on the old seat bench of the bus, Samuel couldn't shake off the feeling of unease that had been gnawing at him ever since he boarded. It was only a two-hour ride from his college to his family home, but this time around every jolt and rattle of the vehicle seemed to signal something sinister lurking beneath the surface. Samuel was a tall, lean young man with dark hair that fell over his forehead in soft waves. His eyes were a deep brown, intense yet gentle behind his round glasses. He wore a simple black sweater, buttoned up to his neck, paired with jeans and sneakers. Despite the cold winds blowing outside, he felt warm enough thanks to the thick blanket tucked under his legs. He glanced around nervously, taking note of the other passengers. There were only five others besides himself, an elderly couple sitting in the front row, a middle-aged woman reading a book by the window, a young mother holding her baby tightly against her chest, and a muscular man with a scar running down his cheek, staring out the fogged-up window. None of them appeared particularly menacing, but Samuel couldn't help but feel as though they all shared some unspoken connection, some hidden agenda that made him uneasy. As the bus continued its journey through the winding roads, the sense of foreboding grew stronger within him, like a heavy weight pressing down upon his chest. Suddenly, the engine sputtered, coughing out black smoke before falling silent altogether. Panic surged through Samuel's veins as the bus came to a halt, leaving them stranded in the middle of nowhere. He looked around frantically, searching for any signs of life beyond the frosted windows. All he could see was a vast expanse of barren trees stretching into the distance, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers beckoning him closer. The air inside the bus grew thick with fear, each passenger exchanging anxious glances as they tried to figure out what was going on. Samuel took a deep breath, attempting to calm his racing heart as he stepped forward to address the driver. However, when he reached the front seat, he found nothing but empty space where the driver should have been. His blood ran cold at the realization that they were truly alone, trapped on this cursed vehicle with no means of escape. Desperation set in, driving him to search the bus for any clues about what might have happened to the driver or why they had broken down in such a remote location. But as he explored the dimly lit aisles, his foot caught on something hard, causing him to stumble and fall face first onto the grimy floor. When he managed to pick himself back up, he noticed a small object lying beside him, a key fob dangling from a chain. Recognizing it as belonging to the missing driver, Samuel hesitated for just a moment before sliding open the emergency exit door and stepping outside into the freezing cold. Outside, the world seemed even more twisted and distorted than before, as if reality itself had been warped beyond recognition. The once pristine snow now lay sullied by strange glowing symbols carved into its surface, and the trees towered overhead like grotesque sentinels, guarding some dark secret. Samuel's mind reeled with questions as he wandered aimlessly through this nightmarish landscape, searching for anything that might provide answers. What had happened to the driver? Why had they been brought here? And most importantly, how could he possibly find his way back to civilization before it was too late? As the hours ticked by, Samuel began to lose hope, succumbing to despair as the biting cold numbed his body and left him vulnerable to the unknown horrors lurking in the shadows. Just when he thought he could take no more, a faint light flickered in the distance, drawing him towards it like a moth to a flame. With renewed determination, Samuel pushed onwards until he finally arrived at a dilapidated cabin nestled among the trees. Peering through the dusty windows, he saw movement within, figures hunched over tables, muttering incantations under their breath as they conducted some diabolical ritual. Terrified yet driven by a sense of duty to protect his fellow passengers, Samuel mustered all his courage and burst through the door, ready to confront whatever evil awaited him. But instead of finding the source of their predicament, he discovered something far worse. The bodies of his companions scattered throughout the room, their faces contorted in agony as they lay lifeless on the floor. Realization struck him like a bolt of lightning, sending shockwaves coursing through his system. They weren't just strangers anymore, they were victims. Sacrifices offered up to appease some malevolent force dwelling within these woods. Overcome with fright and sorrow, Samuel fought back against the cultists, using whatever weapons he could find to tear through their ranks. 
but despite his valiant efforts, he knew he was fighting a losing battle. The odds were stacked against him, and sooner rather than later, his own life would become forfeit. Just as hope began to fade entirely, a sudden burst of energy filled the room, enveloping Samuel in a blinding light. For a brief moment, everything went white, and then suddenly, he found himself standing once again aboard the bus, surrounded by his terrified peers. Disoriented and confused, Samuel struggled to process what had just happened, wondering if it had all been nothing more than a delusion born from desperation and fear. Yet as he looked around at the relieved expressions on their faces, he realized that somehow he had managed to save them, at least temporarily. Even so, the horrors he had witnessed still haunted him long after they arrived at his family home, refusing to be banished back into the shadows. For Samuel, there would be no comforting embrace of familiarity, no respite from the memories that now plagued him day and night. Instead, he found himself adrift in a sea of uncertainty, forever changed by the events that transpired on that fateful journey home. Under a sky heavy with winter, Ethan and his friends, Michael, Sarah, and David, embarked on their annual ice fishing trip. Each year they ventured deeper into the wilderness, seeking isolation and adventure. This time their destination was a remote cabin on the frozen expanse of Lake Cascade, a place whispered about in local lore. Ethan, the unofficial leader, was a tall man with a rugged beard, his eyes reflecting the icy blues of the landscape. Michael, his best friend, was more reserved, his lean frame often hunched over maps or books. Sarah, Michael's partner, brought a bright energy to the group, her laughter echoing against the snow. David, the newest member, was a burly man with a quiet intensity, his past as mysterious as the woods they traversed. The cabin, a wooden structure standing alone against the white wilderness, seemed to welcome them with open arms. Inside, the warmth of the fireplace contrasted sharply with the bitter cold outside. They shared stories and laughter, unaware of the looming storm. As night fell, the wind howled like a chorus of lost souls, and heavy snow began to blanket the world outside. The group nestled in the cabin, comforted by the crackling fire and the camaraderie. On the second morning, they awoke to a world erased by snow. The storm had transformed the landscape into an unrecognizable white abyss. It was during this eerie morning they discovered David was missing. His bed was untouched, no footprints led away from the cabin. Panic set in. Ethan's heart raced as he searched the cabin, his breaths visible in the frigid air. Sarah's eyes were wide with fear, her voice trembling as she called out for David. Michael tried to remain calm, suggesting logical explanations, but his own voice betrayed his worry. The second night huddled together, they jumped at every creak and groan of the cabin. Shadows seemed to dance menacingly in the firelight. Paranoia crept in, fed by the howling wind and the oppressive isolation. Ethan couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, his dreams filled with twisted figures lurking in the blizzard. The third morning, Sarah was gone. Her disappearance was a silent scream in the void of the storm. Michael broke down, his logical facade crumbling into despair. Ethan felt a cold grip on his heart, the cabin no longer a shelter, but a tomb. They searched with desperation, but the storm was relentless, erasing their tracks as quickly as they made them. The cabin became a cage of fear and suspicion. Each night, the wind seemed to whisper secrets, and the shadows grew bolder. On the fifth day, with the storm still raging, Ethan awoke to find Michael missing. Overcome with dread, he felt the cabin closing in on him. The walls seemed to pulsate with a malevolent energy. In the silence, he heard faint whispers, like voices buried beneath the snow. Venturing outside, Ethan braved the storm, determined to uncover the truth. The world outside was a grotesque canvas of white, the snow like frozen waves in a sea of despair. He stumbled upon a disturbing scene, an array of bizarre, twisted sculptures made of ice and snow, humanoid figures frozen in agony. The realization struck him with the force of a thunderclap. These were his friends, transformed into macabre art by an unseen force. In a moment of clarity, Ethan understood the storm was not natural. It was alive, feeding on their fear, their souls. The whispers grew louder, urging him to join his friends in their eternal frozen tableau. 
Fighting against the seductive call of the storm, Ethan staggered back to the cabin. He penned a frantic journal entry, detailing their fate, hoping it would serve as a warning to others. As the cabin door swung open, revealing the howling white abyss, Ethan accepted his fate, his last thoughts a prayer that no one else would follow in their footsteps. Months later, a search party found the cabin, abandoned, the journal the only testament to the terror that had unfolded. The storm had passed, leaving behind an unsettling silence. The sculptures were gone, the lake once again just a frozen expanse, but in the whispers of the wind there was a hint of laughter as if the storm awaited its next victims. In the vast, desolate expanse of Siberia, a relentless blizzard raged, blanketing the landscape in a shroud of white. Amidst this frozen wilderness, a team of archaeologists, led by the experienced doctor Elena Kostova, had embarked on an expedition to uncover ancient ruins, rumored to be buried deep beneath the ice. Elena, a woman of middle age with sharp, intelligent eyes and a demeanor that commanded respect, was joined by a diverse team. There was Alexei, a young and enthusiastic graduate student with a mop of unruly hair, Maria, a seasoned archaeologist with a keen eye for detail, and Ivan, a burly and stoic local guide whose knowledge of the terrain was unparalleled. As they excavated through layers of ice and snow, the team uncovered an entrance to a tomb, hidden for centuries. The architecture was unlike anything they had encountered before, its walls adorned with strange, undecipherable inscriptions. Excitement coursed through the team as they ventured into the tomb's depths. The air inside was eerily still, a stark contrast to the howling winds outside. The walls of the tomb were lined with intricate carvings depicting scenes of winter and desolation. It was in the central chamber that they found it, a sarcophagus made of ice, its surface etched with symbols of an ancient civilization. As Elena and her team opened the sarcophagus, a chill wind swept through the chamber and a spectral figure emerged, its form barely visible in the icy air. The team initially dismissed the apparition as a trick of light and fatigue, but as they made their way back to camp, the true nature of what they had unleashed became horrifyingly apparent. Alexei was the first to experience the entity's malevolent presence. He awoke from a fitful sleep, his tent filled with an unnatural cold. Outside, he saw figures in the snow, their voices whispering his deepest insecurities and fears. Shaken, he tried to convince himself it was just a dream, but the terror had already taken root in his mind. Maria, too, was tormented by vivid hallucinations. She saw her long-deceased sister wandering in the blizzard, calling out to her with a voice as cold as the wind. The line between reality and nightmare blurred, leaving her paralyzed with fear. Even the stoic Ivan was not immune. He felt an oppressive presence watching him, its gaze as piercing as the icy wind. Shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and the howling of the blizzard sounded like laughter. Elena struggled to maintain order, but the spectral entity's influence was relentless. The team's equipment malfunctioned, their communication with the outside world was severed, and the blizzard intensified, trapping them in a frozen hell. The entity, a manifestation of the coldest winter, toyed with them, feeding off their fear. It appeared in the corner of their eyes, its form shifting between human and something far more sinister. The tomb's inscriptions haunted Elena's dreams, hinting at an ancient curse and a winter that never ends. The biting cold became the least of their concerns as they struggled to survive against the malevolent spirit. Desperation set in as they realized the entity would not rest until it consumed them entirely. With their sanity fraying at the edges, Elena devised a desperate plan. They needed to return to the tomb and seal the entity back within its icy prison. The journey back to the tomb was treacherous, the blizzard obscuring their path, the entity ever present in the swirling snow. As they entered the tomb, the temperature dropped sharply, their breaths turning to ice in the air. The entity confronted them in the central chamber, its form now more defined, a twisted silhouette of ice and shadow. Elena, through a combination of bravery and desperation, began to recite the inscriptions on the walls, her voice echoing in the ancient chamber. 
The entity recoiled as if the words caused it pain. Alexei and Maria worked to reseal the sarcophagus, their hands numb and trembling. Ivan, despite his fear, stood guard, his presence lending strength to the others. With a final determined effort, the sarcophagus was sealed, and the entity let out a piercing scream before disappearing into the ice. The tomb's atmosphere shifted, the oppressive cold lifting slightly. The team, exhausted and traumatized, made their way back to the surface. The blizzard had calmed, and for the first time in days, the sun broke through the clouds, casting a weak but hopeful light on the snow-covered landscape. <laughs>